I got a couple of questions about a string theory paper that appeared last month, which supposedly proves that string theory is inevitable or physicists bootstrap the validity of string theory. I read this paper last year, but then I didn't talk about it because it's actually a good paper. And now I'm thinking I'm being unfair. If string theorists do something sensible for once, I should also mention it. So here we go. String theory is today known as a candidate for a theory of everything that would unify all the known physics in one single framework, particle physics combined with general relativity. If you believe string theorists, which you shouldn't, then it's actually the only such candidate, which it's not. But it's arguably true that among the attempts to develop a theory of everything, string theory is currently the best developed developed one by far. But string theory didn't start out as a theory of everything. This is the History Channel, but in this case the history is relevant context because the authors of the new paper revisited the historical argument for string theory. String theory was originally developed to describe the strong nuclear force that acts between the constituents of atomic nuclei. The reason is that the strong nuclear force has a rather peculiar behavior. It becomes stronger the larger the distance. If you think of the gravitational or electric force, in contrast, these become weaker with distance. And where can you find a force that becomes stronger with distance? in a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the stronger the rubber pulls back. We know today that in the strong nuclear force, the analogy of the rubber is a flux tube of gluons, but they didn't know this in the 1960s. What happened instead was that Gabriele Veneziano tried to find a way to describe the data that physicists had collected at the time at SLAC, where they were slamming electrons into protons. He came up with an equation that's now called the Veneziano amplitude, that he, amazingly enough, just guessed by looking up suitable functions in a book. In any case, when physicists inspected his equation further, they realized that it described an interaction mediated by a closed string, so a loop, and that could be interpreted as a spin-2 particle, which is a graviton, the quantum of gravity. Yes, it seemed to describe quantum gravity. This got physicists very excited because they had previously tried to turn gravity into a quantum theory and that didn't work. They just got a lot of infinities. But this did not happen in Veneziano's approach. The original enthusiasm for string theory built on this. Here was a consistent way to obtain a quantum theory of gravity, something that no one had managed to do before. Indeed, string theorists often claim that the Veneziano amplitude is the only way to make gravitational interactions work without infinities. It's the only game in town, as they say. But so far, we only knew that string theory is one way to make it work. Missing has been a proof that it's the only way. This is where the new paper comes in. They write down a list of mathematical assumptions that the graviton amplitude needs to fulfill and then prove that the Veneziano amplitude is the only way to do it. This is where the headline comes from that says that string theory is inevitable. It's because their derivation proves that given certain assumptions, you need strings to quantize gravity, whether you want that or not. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. It's a nice paper. It's a careful mathematical argument that tells you what is logically possible. But let's put this into context. Physics isn't maths. Any mathematical proof is only as good as the assumptions that go into it. So one has to be careful with what this means. The most important assumption that goes into this argument is that whatever the theory of quantum gravity is, it needs to be complete. So it should not give rise to infinities. It should be UV finite as physicists say. But as I explained in a recent episode, there's no reason why this needs to be the case. 
Whatever the next theory on the next deeper level is, it may still not be a final theory or a theory of everything. It might just be an incomplete theory again. Another questionable assumption that goes into the proof is that gravitons exist in the first place. This might simply not be true. Water waves are not made of water quanta, they're made of atoms. In just the same way, gravitational waves may not be made of gravitons. They could be made of something else entirely. Or maybe gravity just isn't a quantum theory. So trying to come up with an amplitude, which is a quantum thing, makes no sense. So I'd say this paper strengthens the argument for string theory, but saying that it makes string theory inevitable is an exaggeration. Mm. Think of it this way. In physics, assumptions are like first dates. Maybe you have a future together, but most often the future just brings an awkward goodbye. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.